also we have black panthers in do you know that i really didn't know that black panthers existed like i just thought it was something that was maybe part of a movie character or something because of black panther like i didn't know we actually had animals that were black panther like malaysia wow everyone what's up clevy nation welcome back to my channel if you're meeting me for the first time my name is clevy and it is so nice to meet you yesterday when i was looking at the things that i really wanted to achieve in 2020 i saw that one of them was to learn about the different countries in the world well we have one more month to kiss 2020 goodbye and i haven't still been able to achieve that so while i was wondering about where to start from an idea popped up in my head that i should start from my most watched countries that is the countries that watch me the most this is my own way of telling you all thank you and to learn about what makes you you so today we are going to be learning about malaysia when i went to youtube to type facts about malaysia god i saw so many videos surprising facts about malaysia amazing facts things to do in malaysia things not to do in malaysia only in malaysia i saw so many videos but i really picked out this one because this was the one that just stood out to me for some reason geography now malaysia well you all will get to decide if i check out the other videos because i would love to know if you love this type of reaction videos so let me know right now in the comment section i can't wait to see all the amazing things i'm going to learn about malaysia and if you're ready to do this with me Please make sure you smash that like button, join the family, join Clevy Nation by clicking on that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss whenever I upload a new video. And as usual, I'm going to be giving away my Instagram and YouTube shout out. And if you want to be featured next, all you need to do is to follow me on Instagram. You can see my Instagram handle right here and leave a comment on my latest post or subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a comment on today's video. Don't forget to watch to the end of this video. To find out if you were today's shout out. All right, Clevy Nation, grab your jotter, your pen, your coffee, your popcorn, your meat pie, whatever will make you comfortable. Call your friend, call everybody because we are going to Malaysia like right now. Well, here we go. Ever since I made the Indonesia episode, you have no idea how many Malaysians were like, okay, now that you did our cousins episode, do not mess with ours. Oh, don't worry, Malaysia. And here to reassure you, I made you some nasi goreng. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. How refreshing! We are back in Southeast Asia, and today, after Brunei, East Timor, Indonesia, we are doing the last country in the Nusantara Archipelago, Malaysia. Ahem! Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there, Singapore. You're so small. So what do the Malaysians bring to the table that the others don't? Well, let's find out in the first segment. Cue transition! Let's find out! Now this is going to be really fun because Malaysia's land has so many unique twists and turns and explaining it, it's, you know, it's kind of like doing a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Right, Impossible. Ken? Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh you got it? I don't know, did I? You got it? First of all, Malaysia is located in Southeast Asia, divided into two main parts. Peninsular Malaysia, where about 40% of the land, which also has the southernmost tip of mainland Asia, Tanjung Kiai, while East Malaysia, or Malaysian Borneo, takes about 60% of the country's land on the island of Borneo, making it one of the only two islands shared by three nations along with Cyprus. If you want to be technical, Cyprus kind of has four, including the UN buffer zone, but you get the point. Just watch the Cyprus episode. Keep in mind, about 80% of the population lives on the peninsula, while only about 20% live on Malaysian Borneo. In addition, the country has over 870 islands off its shores, the state of Sabah having the most with nearly 400, the largest one being Bangi Island. However, the island of Sebatik is a little bigger, but the island is split in half with Indonesia in the south. Also, they have a little bit of a dispute with the Philippines in the east. The country is divided into 13 states and three federal territories, Putrajaya Labuan, with the capital Kuala Lumpur. However, due to over... I've heard about this Kuala Lumpur, like... Wow, now it makes sense as the capital. Like I've heard of all, especially when um your most Malaysians are like always coming to my comment section or my DM asking me when am I be, um, visiting Malaysia. I get a lot like when are you visiting KL? Why are you visiting KL? And I was like, what is KL? I said it was Kuala Lumpur. Wow, interesting. However, due to overcrowding, almost all the government ministries and administrative offices were moved to Putrajaya in 1999. After Kuala Lumpur, the next largest cities are Georgetown on Penang Island and Ipoh. The busiest airports are Kuala Lumpur International, Kota Kinabalu, and Penang Internationals. Now here's the thing, Malaysia lies under 
to the South China Sea. If you don't know anything about this place, and if you didn't watch the Brunei episode, it basically goes like this. <laughs> basically, every country in this area wants a piece of these things called the Spratly Islands. Today, Malaysia has claim to about 11 of them, and the most notable one being Layang Layang, which they built an airbase on. Now, you might notice that it's interesting how these two small entities, Singapore and Brunei, got mixed up into this whole region. Well, when it came to Brunei, it kind of went down like this. Welcome to the Malaysia Agreement. Sultans, please sign the paper saying you'd like to be part of Malaysia. Wait, I'd have to give up that? And, and I'd have to lose control of what? Oh, hell no! As for Singapore, it was more like... Hey, Malaysia, you just got free from British rule. Let's join up. Makes sense? Yeah, we are now one country! Yeah. You have too many Chinese people! And you're gonna waste my money! Yeah, well, you only get privileges to the Malay! Uh, you know what? You're out of the club! Yeah, fine, you know, whatever. I quit. One day, you know what? I'm gonna make something of myself! Okay! And boy howdy did they keep that promise. Otherwise some notable places of interest might include places like the largest roundabout in the world, the Petronas Towers, the tallest twin build- Wow. Oh, this tower is so beautiful. I there hotels on this tower like, wow. It's so, so beautiful. I can't wait to be here. And where, where is it located? Is it also at um, Kuala Lumpur? Is it also there? tallest twin buildings in the world, Kuala Lumpur Tower, the Batu Caves with a Hindu shrine, the National Monument of Malaysia, Legoland Malaysia, yep, they have one, Sunway Lagoon, the National Mosque of Malaysia, Kek Lok Si Buddhist Temple, these palaces, the old Dutch buildings of Malacca, the Leaning Tower of Taluk Intan, Afamosa Fortress, the Cat Statue of Kuching, this Heritage Museum, Sarawak Cultural Villages, and the Sepilak Orangutan Rehabilitation Center, yep, orangutans, they have plenty of bowls oh, in here, impressive. which means we can now swing over to the next segment, the... When it comes to Malaysia's land, they got kind of lucky because not only is it like rich and beautiful, but unlike their neighbors, they don't really have to deal with any crazy catastrophes. Aww. First of all, Malaysia rests comfortably on the bottom of the Eurasian plate, literally shielded on all sides, mostly by Indonesia and the Philippines. This means that if any earthquakes occur, Indonesia usually absorbs all of it. If cyclones and tropical storms attack, the Philippines and Indonesia take the hit. And if a volcano erupts, they don't have to worry because they don't really have any volcanoes. And it's probably happening in Indonesia. Thanks, Indonesia. <laughs> now, when it comes to nature, even though the largest lake, the Kinder Reservoir, lies on the west peninsula of Malaysia side, the eastern Malaysia Borneo side has all the extremes. They have the highest mountain, Mount Kinabalu, the longest river, the Rajang, and a lot more animals. In fact, Malaysia is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. They have 14,500 species of flowering plants and trees, over 600 bird species, over 200 species of mammals. Speaking of which, peninsular Malaysia is home to the most black panthers in the world. Insert Wakanda joke at all times. Speaking of that, the national- Wow! Wakanda forever! Oh god, how I feel was Chadwick like... Rest in peace, man. Aww! Oh, so we have Black Panthers in. Do you know that? I really didn't know that Black Panthers existed. Like, I just thought it was something that was maybe part of a movie character or something because of Black Panther. Like, I didn't know we actually had animals that were Black like Malaysia, wow! Oh, RIP was charged like oh, Wakanda forever. That the national animal is the Malaysian tiger, which is also featured on the coat of arms, which we will cover in Flag Friday. Stay tuned. Otherwise, they have elephants, rhinos, orangutans, and they even have their own version of tapirs, like the ones in South America. Wow! And that creepy-looking proboscis monkey. Many of these species you can find in one of the oldest rainforests in the world, over three times older than the Amazon, Taman Negara. Malaysia is also a land of caves. In fact, they have the largest chamber in the world that can be found in Sarawak. Otherwise, Malaysia is known for producing electronics, palm oil, petroleum, gas and rubber. They're actually the second largest palm oil producer in the world and the largest condom maker, just saying. They even have their own national car company, Proton, making Malaysia the 11th country in the world with the capability to fully design and engineer Go and manufacture Malaysia. cars. Otherwise, some national dishes might include things like nasi kandar, nasi dadang, nasi kerabu, chicken perchik, mango seen and durian are treasured fruits, and the national dish, nasi lemak. Oh, this is um fried chicken. Um, boiled eggs. I don't know. Is that cucumber right there? Wow. Wow. Beans, rice, and I think that's still on top. I don't know. Wow, this is something I would eat. But the only thing I, if I was asked to take away something from this dish, is if that fruit right there is cucumber. I really don't love eating cucumber, so maybe it isn't. But wow, 
It really, really looks tempting. I'm looking forward to eating this when I visit Malaysia soon. Lemak. Oh, and if you have the chance, see if you can witness the famous Tariq tea shows. The servers pour out tea, sometimes Ooh. over a meter in length. It's almost seen as like an art form. Okay, I think that's just about it for now in this segment. Uh, let's talk about the coolest part of Malaysia, the Malaysians. <laughs> Just for the record, the word Malay refers to the races that make up Malaysia. Malayan is the geographic term for peoples of West Malaysia on the peninsula and not part of Borneo. And Malaysian is the nationality and citizenship. So a Malay person in Singapore is Malay, but not Malaysian. And a citizen of Indian descent living in Kuala Lumpur would be a Malaysian and Malayan, but not Malay. Got it? Probably not. First of all, the country has about 32 million people and is one of the fastest growing nations in Asia. The country is made up of 67% Malay or or Bumiputra indigenous Malay peoples. We'll talk more about that in a bit. About a quarter of the population is Chinese, about 7% are Indians, and the rest are other groups mixed in, including a few other Asian groups and Europeans. They use the Malaysian ringgit as their currency, they use the type G and M plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, here's the thing. Let's talk politics. Oh! No, we're not getting into an ideological debate. We're just gonna explain the system in which Malaysia's government operates. Okay. Proceed. Malaysia is one of the few monarchies in the world, however, it's not a monarchy in the conventional sense because they kind of have nine kings ish. These nine states each have a royal leader known as a sultan, and every five years they rotate to allow one of the nine sultans to rule as head king, known as the Yangti Petuang Agong. That means that technically, if you were a boy and your dad just finished being king for his five-year term, you could be the next one, but you would have to wait at least 40 years for it to happen. You know, since eight other kings would have to be king before you. Yeah, I know, it's like, oh, what the? There's a lot more that goes into it, but that's kind of like the basic underline. The I know some of you Malaysians may kind of like really really not agree what i'm about to say now but to me watching this for the first time and hearing about your your system of um operation there i really feel it's fair because if it wasn't rotating that way trust me you would see kings coming out from a particular region like four or three years consecutively like there was just a particular region that keeps on give, producing the head the head um the head sultan or the head king but i really feel this is fair i to me yeah i really that's my own opinion i really feel it is fair though it is your culture i know you might have your own reasons for not maybe agreeing with what i'm saying right now but i really understand it but to me like with the way our own government here is practiced i will go with your own 100 percent they're the only country that does this. I mean, the closest thing would be maybe the Comoros with that rotating president thing, but it's nowhere near as complex as this. Nonetheless, the royals are held under a constitution that limits their power mostly to cultural and religious affairs, as well as appointing certain leaders, and so on. Most of the government activity is held and controlled by the prime minister and the parliament. Which brings us to the most recent controversy, the 2018 election. This effectively changed everything, as for the first time since 1957, the BN party was voted out and the new PKR party took over. And it was actually a peaceful transition. We really don't have a lot of time to talk about it, but it's really interesting to look into and talk to a Malaysian person if you want to know more about it. It was like a huge deal for the country. Anyway. All right, guys, you all heard that. He said I should ask you Malaysian to so come on. What happened in your 2018 election? And the one thing I'm really taking away from this was it was a peaceful, I mean, like, elections are really, really hard. It's really my country. Elections are, like, tough. Elections are bloody. I mean, elections are, like, we really have peaceful 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 elections and so seeing that there was a peaceful transition and it was like a big deal come on guys i really love to know give me the details give me the gist for the country anyway the country has two official recognized languages malay and english they were once a british territory so it kind of makes sense it's taught from elementary school malay is basically intelligible to indonesian both countries can generally understand each other i explained this a bit in the indonesia episode for malay the words are easy to read but the problem is the intonation for example the word for slowly i believe is perlahan not perlahan it's like you just perlahan perlahan am i saying it correctly perlahan not Pelahang. Pelahang. Come on, slowly, slowly. Pelahang. Pelahang. I probably sound stupid, I know that. <laughs> have to know how these things work. Nonetheless, about half of the population is mostly fluent in three languages, adding their mother tongue, especially if they're part of the Chinese and Indian minority groups, and they are allowed to take vernacular schools that teach in these languages, just like Singapore. Which brings to culture. In Malaysia, the population is quite diverse. You have a lot of Chinese, known as the Peranakan Chinese, that have existed there since the 15th century. They have a unique Chinese Malay culture with a touch of European influence. The Indian community is mostly Tamil and Telugu-speaking South Dravidian Indian groups that were brought over during the 
the British colonial years. Then of course you have the largest people group, the ethnic Malays or the Bumiputra, as well as the Orang Asal, whom are like the really indigenous ethnic Malays that make up the majority of the population in East Malaysia on Borneo. Sometimes these two people groups are collectively joined together under the term Malay, although some might disagree. But either way, these two groups kind of steer the direction in terms of what constitutes Malay culture. Oh, and don't even get started on the Bajau people that live on these structures in the middle of the ocean for most of their lives and they've adapted to hold their breath for like 15 minutes underwater. Yeah, those people are cool. Another thing- Wow. Like, first of all, really, I wouldn't even live there. Like, I'm scared of a huge body of water. I'm scared of huge bodies of water and man, like, there is an island in my place that says that water is only sweet in a cup. I wouldn't even go close to that place. Like, no like and the water seems so transparent and clear but i know that it's very very deep but it's transparent. The thing I really want to highlight is that sometimes Indonesians do kind of accuse Malaysians of stealing their culture because a lot of Malaysians are descended from Sumatra. Faith-wise, Malaysia is also quite diverse. Although the country's official religion is Islam, it's a multi-confessional nation. Buddhists are mostly from the Chinese community, Hindus for the Indians, Christians from all races. Numerous temples, mosques, and shrines and churches are found all over. Malay culture is defined by a number of aspects. For one, the clothing. Remember a couple months ago that guy from Malaysia, Kamarul, sent me the Malay hat? the Tengolok. So I forgot to bring this on set when we were filming, but I still have the hat and I, I love it and I told you I would wear it in the episode. So here I am. I'm wearing it in the Malaysia episode. Thank you so much, man. I asked some of you guys, the Malaysian geography peeps, what you would like me to highlight in terms of Malay culture. And some things you said included things like the performing arts, such as Joget dancing and Makyong theater, traditional shadow puppetry, Silat martial arts, Songket weaving, the traditional steep roof and sharp buttress architecture, Gamelan music. Speaking of which, History time. We don't have enough time to go too far into it, but in the quickest way I can put it, Hindu kingdoms, Buddhist kingdoms, Islamic Sultanate, Portuguese came in, Dutch came in, British came in and made the White Raja period, which made things interesting. World War II, Japanese came in, British came in again, independence. Okay, very quickly, just to cut, this is the part where I totally forgot to mention all the cool stuff that happened in the 60s. It's how they got those two states in Borneo. We'll explain more on Flag Slash Fan Friday, so stay tuned. Economic restructuring and industry boom, 2018 vote for the new prime minister, and here we are today. All right, some notable people that you guys, the Malaysian geography people, suggested that I should mention in this video might include people like Siti Nuraliza. Oh, Siti Nuraliza, of course! You don't mention how well we you mention, like, uh-huh, Siti Nuraliza, let's go. Lat, the cartoonist, Sheikh Muzaffar Shukor, P. Ramli, Ziavi, Hang Tua, Enrique of Malacca, Michelle Yo. Oh, Michelle Yo, that lady acted, um, Crazy Rich Asians. Wow, she's also from Malaysia. Okay. Oh, she acted crazy rich Asians. I can remember that movie. Oh, Tony Fernandez, Air Asia owner, designer Jimmy Chu, Melinda Louie, singer Yuna, director James Wan, Dr. Mahathir Mohammed, Nicole Ann David, Lee Chong Wei, Henry Golding. Even Henry Golden. Even Henry Golding, he also acted crazy rich Asians. And the first Prime Minister, Tunku Abdul Rahman. I'm sure there's way more famous people I could have mentioned, but we gotta move on. Time to go to the last part of this episode, the... Now, Malaysia is quite the powerhouse player when it comes to Southeast Asia. They got a good thing going on and they host great parties. Outside of Asia, the EU has good relations, making Malaysia one of the top three trading partners of Southeast Asia. And specifically, Austria loves exchanging electronics and pharmaceuticals with them. Of course, the UK is still pretty close as a former colony. Much of the cultural residue is still evident to this day. They are one of the Commonwealth of Nations. Many Malaysians live in the UK and most of the white population in Malaysia are of British descent. As a member of the Association of Southeast East Asian nations. Of course, they have close ties to their neighbors. Cambodians love Malaysia and visit often, whereas Malaysia is one of the closest and biggest investors of Cambodia. Thailand has a few issues since there are those Malay Patani separatists in the south that keep protesting, whereas the Philippines is like, hmm, we're really similar ethnically, but you're mostly Muslim and I'm mostly Catholic, but whatever, we both like coffee and fried chicken. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Malaysians I've talked to have said Indonesia and Singapore. Singapore may have left the Malaysian Union, but they still kept close ties as a 
sovereign state. They are quite cooperative in business and even culturally, they are very similar with noticeable Chinese and Indian minority enclaves. Indonesia is like the big brother that has a very different political system, but in the end, they cannot deny how alike they are. The biggest difference would be that most Indonesians have a Javanese background, whereas the Malaysians are just Malay, mostly Sumatran, but they talk the same, they eat the same, they enjoy the same hot, humid atmosphere, and they have close relations altogether. In conclusion, with sultans, kings, tigers, panthers, temples, shrines, mosques, and really cool hats, it's no wonder why Malaysia is becoming a hot spot that everyone's talking about today. Stay tuned, the Maldives is coming up next. Wow, this was really, really interesting. I think the one thing I really learned, and I think the one thing that came as a shocker to me is that Malaysians speak English. Like, I wouldn't have guessed it. I mean, like, because, okay, mostly because I have most people come to me from Malaysia, speak to me in my comment section, and most times they're always apologizing for maybe, they're like, oh, sorry for my bad English, sorry for... So I felt that maybe you guys really don't speak English and that you, you learn it so you can be able to converse with people that don't understand Malaysia. But hearing that it's even taught in elementary school, come on, that is really, really very, very impressive. Seriously, man, like, if I was asked to count countries that speak English, I wouldn't even count Malaysia in because I didn't know you guys speak English. And that is really impressive. That was, that was really a shocker for me. And wow, Kuala Lumpur, I really learned that. I learned that we have, as in Malaysia, it's kind of like divided into two. We have the peninsula and we have the Borneo. And we have 80% living on peninsula white, 20%. And we have the most islands there. And wow, that's really impressive. Of course, I won't forget Black Panthers, like, oh, Malaysia, wow, I don't know, I just can't think about the fact that largest kind of making country, like, you all, but yes, you all make good cards, Proton, wow, I really learned a lot about Malaysia, and I hope you did too, I really did enjoy this, and I love to talk about more things about Malaysia, because I saw so many videos, I saw surprising facts, amazing facts, things not to do in Malaysia, things only done in Malaysia, I love to check all of those things. I love to dive deep into Malaysia. I love to discover your culture and what makes you, you. But first of all, understanding the geography and how it works and how your monarchy system works and everything does in Malaysia is really, really impressive. Um, I mean, I've seen people that have come from Malaysia like I never thought they were from Malaysia. Um, what else did I learn? I learned so much from there. Yeah, um, the Jupet, the, the, the Jupet dance. You, you guys will teach you when it's time. But I love it so, so much. I really did enjoy myself. Here are today's Instagram and YouTube shout out. Thank you so much for being a member of Clevy Nation, for staying active on my platform and for supporting my journey. If you want to be featured next, all you need to do is to follow me on Instagram. Because it's my Instagram handle right here and leave a comment on my latest post or subscribe to my youtube channel and leave a comment on today's video i did enjoy it myself and i hope you did too if you have any other suggestions recommendations you have that favorite you really want me to react to you have other videos about malaysia or your country you really want me to check out because i really want to learn a lot about you please make sure you drop it right now in the comment section if you know you enjoyed this video just do what i did please smash that like button Join the family, share this video, and please join the family. Join Club Nation by clicking on that subscribe button and then the notification bell so you don't miss whenever I upload a new video. All right, Club Nation, you know it. I can't wait to see you in my next video. But till then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay blessed. I love you. I love you so, so, so much. And thank you for always watching. Bye.